good for your lymphatic system, it's good for your nervous system, it's good for everything. If having one to two grams of protein per kilo of body weight was the answer, then everybody in the bodybuilding community would not be relying on PEDs to keep their muscle, would not be relying on PEDs to compete. So if everybody who sells these protein powders and everybody that endorses protein as the secret to their bodybuilding competitions, you know, the world would be a different place, but we, we are not in that world. And since 80s is when steroids became very, very popular. Since then, it's just been a part of the culture of bodybuilding and that just is what it is. And it's getting more and more extreme as time goes on. You see lots of examples of this on the internet. So if protein and protein powder and animal protein and this that plant-based protein and every kind of protein, because there's a lot of vegetarians and vegans that claim protein is still sort of the answer, right? The world would be full of healthy and lean people, but that's just not where we're at because the protein is being pushed so hard um, and it's creating so much stress on your kidneys because it has to filter out the nitric waste. So. The amount of protein that is in rice, that is in potatoes, that is in sweet potatoes, that is in any kind of heavy starch or legume, that is the amount of protein that we need to function well. That is the amount of protein that we need for repair, recovery, and building. If you pretend like there's no scientific data and research and whatnot if you pretend that there's none of that and you just look at you observe there are plenty of cultures that survive with little protein like little meaning less than 30 grams of protein and they have zero to no colon cancer they have no gallbladder problems they have no autoimmune disease um, they have no heart problems. They have no diseases that are associated with North America. They're in Western food consumption. They have none of them. And their diet is solely based on starch. It's, it's so, solely based on 90 something percent of starch of sweet potatoes. And because of that diet, they are having 25 grams of protein per day. And these people will absolutely outperform anybody on the standard American diet, they are right in it and they have to live their life according to the land. So they're not going to Walmart to go buy things. Like you just, you know, just to put things into perspective, like they don't get just go beep, beep, beep and buy something. They have to do something about it. They have to create, make, um, do something in the community trade. Like there is a whole other way of life supported by living on a mostly starch based way and you won't survive if you're relying on protein uh, protein powders uh, protein bars uh, more meat consumption um, an excessive amount of beans or whatever it is i don't have anything against plant protein okay like i have nothing against beans but they are not on my plate every day our muscle is mostly made out of water, you know, and good lean muscle mass. You want to be hydrated. Like that's the point. You want to have enough carbohydrates because that supports your hormonal function. And you want to have enough water. You want to be hydrated. Like you want to be full. This is having the a right amount of glycogen stores. So it's not like eating meat puts meat on your bone. <laughs> and that's just not how it works. Um, so the amino acids and things that we need from protein sources, there's enough in the whole, there's protein in fruit. Like I know it's a minuscule amount. I realize that I, I, I realize these things and there's small amounts of fat in fruit as well. So when you're counting what you're eating in a day, if you're into that, if you're really trying to figure out the macros and stuff, I think a lot of people negate fruits and vegetables and they just say they're a free-for-all and like it's not a horrible way to look at 
at look at them, but the fact is, is that there is enough, there is a little bit of protein and fat available in these foods. And that's the amount that we need. And that's the amount that your body actually understands what to do with. And it's not overloaded. And then having to do other mechanisms to support the function of your body and how you handle the day and how you handle performing and how you handle uh, your errands and how you handle your work and how you handle your creative process. So, and a high protein diet, I don't care if it's like grass fed beef or if it's processed meats. If you're having these items, you are more prone to disease. You are more prone to having problems with your heart, with your organs, with your colon, with your skin, with your joints. Just your general well-being will decline over time if you continue to overload the amount of protein that you have in your body because it has to excrete it. It has to get rid of it. It doesn't just build more muscle on you. Like, it's just not how it works. It's not like, oh, well, I had, you know, 200. I don't, I, like, I don't even know what people eat because I don't pay attention to protein anymore. But it, it just seems like a lot of women and men are packing on the protein to feel satiated or doing a lot of extra work for your body instead of giving it the complete amount from fruits, veggies, starches, legumes, and same with nuts and seeds. Like I don't have them if at all, really. Uh, honestly, I don't even remember the last time I had like a handful. Oh, I did have some chestnuts, but those are very low fat. I'm talking about like a walnut or a sunflower seed or peanuts, or I know they're not really peanuts, but it's in transition. So, you know, two years ago, now that I'm thinking about it, when I was living at the beach, I did have a lot of peanuts because it was like I didn't have um, access to a stove so that was something I could just grab and eat and have it and have it with like milk jam bananas crack some peanuts in there and make some sort of like makeshift yogurt because <laughs> I didn't really have um, access to anything else but in any case uh, protein is dehydrating and it just leads to kidney damage and stress that's the bottom line and that's where I'm gonna leave it. Let's talk about fiber in your diet and how fiber is really important on this high carbohydrate lifestyle. So we should be aiming to get around like 100 grams of fiber a day. And I know that's a huge number to some people. Places in Uganda and Papua New Guinea that are having a high starch diet, which everyone have suddenly figured out that the sugar diet is really just a starch based diet because you can't have candy all the time <laughs> and that's like what I've been saying from the beginning is it's just not sustainable it's doable you can do juice fasts and you can do sugar fasting or whatever it's called like just not sustainable long term so that's why everyone's hopping on to the starch finally which is great news because that's what your body actually wants that's when your metabolism is going to start working correctly and you're gonna feel a lot better. So having enough fiber means that you're getting enough water as well. So you wanna be drinking enough water if you're having a lot of fiber, especially if you're adding in something like psyllium husk, which is a great tool to have. So you definitely wanna have enough water so that that creates an environment where your colon has to now absorb water to get that fiber to move out and you're gonna be having a bowel movement that's more like a cow patty, if I could explain it in, in any way. You don't really wanna have that hard, dehydrated stool. That's what keto people probably poop like. You know, you wanna have something that's more like a cow patty. That's just the best way to describe it. That's what you want. And it's really interesting that the cows <laughs> eat grass and they're basically having sugar through the grass and they have a cow patty. That's what, that's what they make. So that's because it's high in fiber. And so this regulates your estrogen output because your estrogen levels, I should say, because you poop out estrogen. So if you are a woman or you are a man and you have too high of estrogen because of meats, because of processed foods, because of oil, uh, because of too much salt and whatever, it's all mixed in together. It's just a too much of the food that you shouldn't be eating. 
and that's why your estrogen levels are high and that's why you have problems with fat storage so you need enough fiber to poop that estrogen out that's how the estrogen leaves the body <laughs> so yeah having a high fiber diet there's just it's very good for you on all health markers it's very good for your colon it's very good for your appendix it's very good for your gallbladder it's very good for all of the organs and functions of your body so having enough fiber should be a priority going forward um, if you haven't thought about it before um, I'm sort of really starting to connect the dots especially with like having a regular bowel movement is having enough water and fiber and of course rest and then of course exercise helps that so jump on a trampoline, um, do some yoga, uh, something. Do something with your day just to get 20 minutes in. If you can get 20 minutes in, get your fiber in, get your sleep in. It's like, yeah, it's like, okay, I gotta do check, 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 check. But soon these things, once you start doing them on the daily, they just become you, you become the habit. So it's really enlightening to know that having enough fiber can regulate your, hormo your hormones and regulate estrogen. Blood, blood flow is also really important. Oh yeah, I guess I'll, so the power of lymphatic drainage and massage and blood flow i just got a, like a thai massage a couple days ago and it was like the most enlightening experience i've had in a while though the way that they stroke your skin is it's always going towards the heart so it's always pushing more blood flow and it's draining your lymphatic system and it's just like hydrating the skin with the oil and the whole breathing every time that they make a movement you you breathe out this this tension you it's just you oxygenate the blood you oxygenate the blood so that the blood flow can move it's like it's so enlightening how important massage is and human touch and having this connection it's it's mind-blowing to me it's it's one of the most amazing experiences i've had in a long time and i used to get regular massages that were more like traditional swedish massage a a thai woman do a thai massage on you it's like something it was it was the best the best thing had invited better rest and better bowel movements so movement and touch and self-care and stretching and getting out in the sun and putting some oil on your body like all of these things putting your feet in the ocean and i know like not everyone's at the ocean or the beach but like having some sort of your feet on the ground and connecting and allowing your body to rewire it kind of sounds like woo woo but i don't care it's part of your blood flow it's part of it's part of our physiology it's part of where we come from it's part of how we connect so yeah i would encourage you if you haven't had a massage for a long time to go get a thai massage if you can but um that's part of the clearing out it's allowing your blood to flow and allowing this like hard part of the tension in the shoulders and the neck and all of these things um let letting that letting that kind of move out of you and that carries that carries a positive meridian charge through your body so that you can function properly and use the carbohydrates uh, promptly or effectively. So I will leave the video there and um, please post any comments or questions down below and I will see you in the next one.